hello traders it's Samurai Trader here welcome to this video in today's video I'm going to be discussing one of the most frequently asked questions that I receive on what are the best chart settings the best time frames to particularly day trade with so I'm going to be running through with you a number of suggested or recommended time frames to use and how I come up with those time frames because there is a formula that I use so if you're going to be trading say uh, swing trading or even position trading you can use the same formula to set those time frames so just uh, to get this correct first of all the EC stands for the entry chart so most of you are aware I now trade with three charts I have an entry chart an anchor chart one and an anchor chart two it really makes trading so much easier when you're using a higher time frame now if this is if this is new to you uh, start off with one uh, high time frame and over time perhaps consider the second time frame as you'll find that it will dramatically improve your bottom line results as we get underway I do need to put up the risk disclaimer there is a risk in trading please pause the video and make sure that you do read the disclaimer first of all I just want to talk very quickly about trend following we know that a trend is more likely to continue than actually end the trend is your friend till it ends we've heard all of these great quotes but it's true and so using multiple time frames makes it that much easier and the reason I bring this up I really want to encourage you to really get on board with trading with the trend particularly if trading hasn't been good for you and this is an excellent book by Robert Miner high probability trading strategies and what he points out in his book and if we take the dark blue line what you really want to be doing is trading in the direction of the overall trend and here we can see here that the uh, little green line the red line here's where we have a pullback and a trend continuation and then when you've got multiple time frames and then you have multiple divergence setups at the same time it's a very very powerful signal hence you will see me using multiple time frames so let's first of all start off talking very quickly about the three main trading sessions that we have basically we've got Forex and most of the futures markets now trade 23 hours 24 hours a day five days a week now with those different hours of course we have different markets different volumes etc so we need to consider the speed of the market when we are trading which will then affect our stops our targets and how long we choose to stay in the trade so the main trading session of course is New York which then will close and reopens at 6 p.m. if you're a futures trader that is it closes for now opens up at 6 p.m. and we go into what we call the globex session which which consists of the Asian and the London sessions during those sessions the volume is a lot lower the market is a lot slower so we need to generally adjust the time frames that we are trading now if we're in a, a time of great volatility you may find that you need to re-increase the time frames or in, make them higher but when you trade with a higher time frame if you are say tucking your stop under a swing low or a swing high you'll find quite often that your stops are also larger that then can affect the account size that you've got particularly as with my traders I recommend that they never ever ever have any more than 2% uh, risk and over time as their accounts are uh, built and as they trade more contracts they drop their risk factor down eventually that they're down around 1% to only 0.5% now yes the return on equity may be lower then but they'll stay in the business in uh, a lot longer okay they survive as they say there are bold traders there are old traders but there are no old bold traders now as we get into the chart types or which of the time frames actually I meant to say we have different types of charts so I want to break it into two categories because this will affect the time frame that you use so if we take the three and this isn't of course the exhaustive list this is just the main charts that I tend to find that most traders use today either a time based chart a tick and a volume now if you trade 
either of these three I'm going to show you a specific formula that I use in setting the time frames now if you use or trade with a range chart or a Renko uh, I love Renko and as you'll see I love trading both Renko and tick together they work complementary and I'll show you and give you a few tips on that uh, range I also love on Forex so when we're trading range or Renko it is a different formula than the volume tick or time base because the candles are formed in a specific price range so they form differently so hence the time frame that I use is different now when it comes to Renko what I found is that most trading platforms have their Renko chart set up as uh, the totally different inputs and different names etc now if you go and take ninja trader the uni Renko the bar period you would use for a four tick Renko which is what I love on CL is two six and two if you're trading with Sierra it's four two and two if you trade uh, trade station custom Renko it's four zero four zero two so I just want you to be very aware that different platforms will have different inputs very important you consider that now whilst we're on that let's just quickly go to my Google Drive now the chart time frames a lot of the or the two main handouts that I'm going to be showing you today you will find on my Google Drive here they are here all right so they're in a folder called chart time frames you'll be able to download them from there now also when it comes to indicators I've got indicators there for NT7 NT8 think or swim uh, there's some there for Sierra and of course trade station is many indicators there for TS but I just wanted to specifically point out that with need to trade a rate one of my members designed and coded uh, under it's in the JG folder uh, a really great Renko chart indicator and if you wanted to look at all of my indicators set up that is we've also had the ATR stop and flip coded if you go to Denzel's latest template or even trader bougie two of our traders you'll be able to see their templates so you'll be able to download the templates now if you're a brand new member don't forget to go and watch the 2b trading strategy videos and to download the cheat sheet the 2b is an 80 to 90 percent trade setup once you learn it and master it it's very very rules based and it's nothing short of brilliant and so logical and easy to learn make sure you master that and the 34 B's there's two folders right next door with the 34 B's so let's go back to this here so first of all I want to talk about fib numbers I've got uh, now over 6,000 members and I would say at least half of them use Fibonacci numbers for all sorts of reasons okay they love their fib numbers so just a quick tuition here if you're say trading the NQ during the Globex hours you might use a 34 tick chart why because it's a much slower market where during the New York session I would recommend you trade a 144 stay with me because we'll come to a specific um, uh, PDF on these in a moment but what I want to point out here is that these are fib numbers and so if you're using say a 34 you would have what we call an anchor chart one of an 89 and a 233 you will see me in a moment talk about multiples of three so what you may choose to do is after you watch the main video here is to go back and take a screenshot of these chart time frames because in a moment you're about to learn how you might choose to use them so let's talk about first of all the settings that I recommend for time based tick and volume based charts because in the end the candles or the bars depends on what format you're using they look fairly similar so first of all we have three types of time frames or three charts that I trade with we've got what we call the EC which is the entry chart the anchor chart one which is the intermediate time frame then my highest time frame if you're trading tick uh, time or volume based charts I use a multiple of three 
so therefore say if you're trading the ES and it wouldn't matter what market you're trading I'll show you how to adjust time frames in a moment but the same formula applies so if you're trading the ES 500 tick you would multiply that by three times and your anchor chart one would be 1500 for an anchor chart two you would multiply that by three times and it would be four and a half thousand if you're a brand new trader start off by learning how to trade of course on your entry chart and maybe just with one anchor chart in your early days start with those and you could trade forever just with those two time frames mighty fine you don't have to have the third time frame but in time you'll see a number of benefits and that's beyond the scope of today's video but you'll actually um, pick up some really big trades using a third high time frame so these are non-fib numbers now is there a huge difference between using round numbers like this compared to fib numbers I seriously doubt it however I'm going to show you the fib number formula out of healthy respect for our Fibonacci traders so fib number 610 is a Fibonacci number so during the New York session on the ES you might choose to use a 610 tick what's the closest fib number three times higher or approximately it's 1597 so if we go back to this here you'll see here that we've got 610 is your entry chart three times that approximately is 1597 what's three times that approximately the closest one is 4181 so that's my next one up so therefore my entry chart would be 610 anchor chart one would be 1597 and anchor chart two would be 4181 now if you were trading say CL and you were trading CL during the New York hours with a 200 tick so you'd make your CL chart 200 600 and 1800 everything is on a multiple of three and the reason being is EMA bounces <coughs> what excuse me what you'll discover is with these formulas that the markets are as we know of what we call a fractal nature the setup that we have appear on an on an entry chart will appear also on the anchor chart and it will also appear on a higher time frame by using the combination of three times and the EMAs that we use you will find you'll have multiple EMA bounces at the same time which will dramatically improve your bottom line results so three times so just remember the three times rule with time tick and volume let's now consider Renko because Renko and range charts are set up based upon price range we have a different formula so each time frame is to be 1.75 up to two times higher than the closest lower time frame now 1.75 to me is the best however when you round them off uh, to the pip or to the tick or to the point you're not always going to get an exact number so therefore you need to round it to the closest number so let's just take CL for a moment now with CL during New York for New York hours I love a four tick chart and so that will be um, will work 99% of the time so four ticks is my entry chart that's what I do all of my trading on and if you multiply four by 1.75 you end up with a round number of seven guess what with CL we can actually have a seven tick Renko so basically it's a $70 brick so over here this is a $40 brick this is 70 then we take the 7 and we multiply it by 1.75 so my anchor chart 1 multiplied by 1.75 comes to 12.25 but of course on the CL we can't have a 12.25 uh, chart it's got to be either 12 or 13 so I just round it down to the closest number which is 12 so I end up with an entry chart of 4 anchor chart of 7 anchor chart 1 and anchor chart 2 of 12 and that formula works really well 
now if we then look at time based what are the most popular time based charts because in a moment we're going to look at suggestions for my Renko and my tick charts what I tend to find is that day traders like to use 1, 3, 5, 15 instead of your most common when you're trading 15, you're sort of almost becoming a swing trader. So you would multiply a 3 and you can actually set up a 9, uh, and you could also set up if you wished a, um, a 28 or a 30 minute chart. So you could have 3, 9, and then maybe 30. But in the end if it's off by a minute or you round them off to be exactly three times uh, the time uh, does it make any difference say to compared to the 15 minute or the 30 minute well one thing you will find traders with these specific uh, time frames around the five minute and 15 minute you'll find a lot more orders in the market at those time frames as a five minute candle closes why because there's thousands of traders around the world that work with five minute time frames hence you'll see a lot more orders in the market so I actually like the idea of having different numbers set up so you can enter at a slightly different time I personally believe there are advantages with that so let's look at a few charts and we're going to look at some more PDFs so this is what I mean so this is what we call an entry chart so what I've got here is a CL the black gold oil two uh, sorry four tick chart with a two tick offset and so the market opens and this is during the globex session now if you look at this here this is not too bad it's over uh, uh, that's actually only over an hour quite often during the globex session that might be almost all day's price action but in this day the market was actually moving along nicely so what we'll actually do is we may uh, of course trade the four tick during the New York hours but lower the time frame may be down to a two tick during the uh, after hours during the globex session and I'll show you a, a time frame sheet in a moment on that so this is my entry chart my two B's are very very these are the your 80 to 90 percent probability trades and you'll usually find with the two B's that you'll get a much longer or more profitable run with those as well and let's not forget members the advantages of using multiple time frames when you then have multiple divergences okay it's just a kick butt strategy but as always you want to master the art of trading with the trend only remember that one thing you want to master trend trading only to begin with let's now look at the anchor chart one and two now in my particular case because I have multiple screens it's a lot easier for me to have two or three markets up at once uh, two screens each so typically and I should point this out what I'd normally have is my trading matrix just here so I've got my entry my general trading uh, dome here oh, sorry a chart I should say with the matrix here and on a separate screen above that screen I've then got the uh, anchor chart one and the two and the whole principle is of course I want to be trading in the direction of the overall trend unless I'm taking very very high probability divergence trades let's look at another chart in this particular chart we're looking at gold and I've got both the entry chart being a two tick Renko so on gold I like a two tick Renko and the anchor chart is four so that's two times higher if I was to multiply two two ticks by 1.75 well of course that's going to uh, um, come up to what's at 3.5 my nearest number would either be three or four so I do want to go for the higher number I think it's just better because I am or wanting to trade in the direction of a higher time frame and as I mentioned earlier if you're a new trader good way to start maybe just with two time frames to begin with uh, this is another chart during Globex so this is the Globex session and here with the Globex session I'm using a two tick Renko and each one of these step ups then is one tick or ten dollars and I'm using a four tick as my anchor chart one and these are actually three live trades that I took we had here our classic 1d along with a pivot bounce up here I had a $74 bounce with a 200 overshoot but note over here 
see how I've got a 200 EMA bounce on the anchor chart can you perhaps start to see how your higher time frames come in play normally you'd look at this and say okay this is a $74 bounce which round number bounces on oil are very very powerful but when you combine it with a 200 EMA overshoot a 74 bounce and a 200 B what you've got is what we call a loaded trade and this is why I have these formulas set to the settings that I have so then we come down here we then have got a 2b now when we've got a 2b we know that our pivots are price magnets and of course we rally down so we can see our 2b setting there and our 2b setting here an absolute just incredible combination looking at another one here get that up whoops let's go down here here we go what if the markets particularly slow well here we're looking at a CL chart and one of my members out of London put me onto this out of the UK where during the really quiet times try this traders uh, with a market if whatever market you're trading try a one tick or a one point or a one pip chart with a two and four combo and in real slow times uh, these work really well now at the moment I'm only just showing you the Renko but I'm going to show you in a moment how the tick comes in play with it as well so in slow market times um, we can see here we've got a rule of one we've got a rule of one we've got a rule of one trading in the direction of our anchor chart so one two and four can work really well if you're trading the ES uh, which it's 1250 a tick you could trade once again there as well one two and a one point which is four ticks that's a nice combo let's talk about tick charts so here I've got a 233 and I love the combination of tick and Renko together because one of the challenges we can have with Renko if you go back to this chart you can sometimes get these really strong trends and even though you've got a couple of other re-entry opportunities we're on a Renko chart they're beautiful for smoothing out price action but they can also remove some important information that's handy to have at times and so referring to a tick chart that can give you a lot of additional entries in the direction of the overall trend during New York I like a 233 tick on CL 610 and my highest uh, time frame the anchor chart 2 is a 1597 you may notice they are all Fibonacci numbers the next one here is a 4 a 7 and 12 so what you can see here is I've got all four time frames on the one chart so if you're limited uh, say to two screens what you might choose to do and you want to trade two markets you might have um, uh, split your screens have your domes on one I mean there's so many different combinations that, that you can use here now let's have a look at the settings that I recommend so if we go to uh, let me just pull this up uh, let's start with this one so members in that folder suggested time frames or chart time frames you'll see, I've got a couple of documents this one's going back to 2017 I go through a number of combos here but I specifically here just want to quickly point out that if you're trading pips in the end the time frames that you trade it comes down to what is tradable so when someone says to me well why did you go for a four tick Renko for your main trading chart well because it's usually slow enough gives me enough time to execute my trades so if you're a scalper and you really like fast moving action during the Globex session you might even jump down or start using a three tick Renko two ticks is just really just far too fast during New York but two ticks and as I mentioned maybe even one at times during the globe session is tradable so when it comes to the euro charts or sorry trading Forex I meant to say uh, it doesn't matter what market find a time frame that suits you now one of the challenges that we've got with Forex is that you know we've got our fast times and our slow times it's you know we don't usually just get those time frames where they're ticking away beautifully together so you, you've got to really just watch that I tend to find with the euro and the Aussie dollar at the moment a four tick chart works really well or a four pip let me say so if you're using a four uh, uh, pip chart 
you would then go if you're using time or you don't have volume of course with uh, Forex but if you're using time or tick you go uh, three times higher if you're trading with range or Renko you go 1.75 to two times higher now if you're trading as a quick reminder with say MT4 and you want to display uh, Renko or range you will need to buy a plug-in for those platforms because they don't come standard with MT4 in the MT4 folder on my Google Drive you'll find a link to a vendor a third-party vendor that sells the plug-in for MT4 for around 50 US dollars I've got no I don't even know who he is but I know that um, many of our members have gone there and bought uh, a plug-in for MT4 for a range chart and a rank on they've been very very happy with the plug-in so you can buy a lifetime license effectively for around 50 US dollars so in the end whatever market I'm trading the time frames that I'm going to set really comes down to is it tradable does that time frame suit my personality so what I've got here is just a small cheat sheet make it a little bit easier for you on the main markets that I trade and the time frames to consider so if you're trading CL during the globe session I'd like to have a full rank go up but it can be very very slow during the after hours market so that is where I'll also have then set up a two and a four now if I was just uh, trading New York I'd have a four seven and twelve so those three are my charts now you may notice here I've then got my tick chart settings as an example with Renko sometimes you may not have divergence and you get a really good move and as we know traders if you've got a really fast rapid uh, a mean reversion move uh, it's great if you've got divergence and quite often on Renko charts we don't have divergence and even uh, range charts can be the same where you look over at your tick charts you'll see that you've got a really good divergence set up and what it does it actually helps confirm taking that reversal on the Renko so during the after hours market I like a four maybe a two four seven and twelve just depending on the speed of the market and my tick charts I like to have running are 89 and 233 once we switch over into say even the London session at times but particularly New York I will have a four with my matrix on it my anchor chart of 7 and 12 and the tick charts I like to have a 233 and a 610 if you're going to have a third time frame on your tick chart or if you only trade tick chart and if your tick charts and if you're using uh, fib numbers you would then jump up to a 1597 so you'd have a 233 610 and 1597 if the market's really slow uh, very rarely you're going to drop down to a two but you may choose to and just be careful of jumping backwards from one time frame to another you don't want to do that either now with the Globex session I like during the Globex I tend to find generally a 0.5 and a 1 Renko a great so 0.5 a 1 and maybe then the one and a half to the two I only really want to be focusing on three time frames so I know I've got four there you've got the 0.75 you might which is three tick Renko by the way that's three ticks on the ES which is 37.50 or $25 per brick here if you wrote 0.5 with the ES after hours I like a tick chart of 144 and 377 right they work really well so they're much lower than what we would trade during the New York hours now New York rarely except well, well around usually around July August you can actually be using a 0.5 Renko but during it normal times 0.75 a three tick Renko works really well with an anchor of one and a half and two and a half so I want to be trading in the direction of my taking all the pullbacks and trend continuation in the direction of the one and a half and two and a half now with my tick charts you may notice I've got 550 there instead of 610 the reason 
theme for that I've always used a 550 so if you're a fib fan put in your 610 now I'm quite happy here to use a 1597 look it could be 1700 it could be 1500 it doesn't matter a huge amount as long as it's fairly close but I do like a 550 and a 1597 so what I'm actually doing during the New York session is increasing the time frames that I wish to trade because the markets much faster so down here if the market slow go back drop the time frame down with the e mini Russell a six Renko uh, with a 11 tick stop so uh, what's say two times comes to 12 drop it down a little to 11 what's two times 11 comes to 22 just drop it back a little bit to a 20 tick that works really well so in the end it doesn't have to be exact you know close enough is good enough in whichever market whether you're trading stocks as a reminder traders if you're trading stocks or other markets it's just a matter of dropping a time frame down where it's tradable so let's just say if you were trading Netflix as a stock and you found that a 500 tick chart worked really well you would have a 500 a 1500 for your anchor chart one and a four and a half thousand tick chart for your anchor chart two and just to remind you if three charts is a little much if you're a newer trader just start with the two what you want to be doing traders is trading in the direction of the overall trend couple of little tips here for you this is the ES chart a three tick ES and you may notice that with those tick charts why did I use those particular time frames as well what I want to see is the tick and the Renko chart somewhat similar with the way they're moving or plotting on the chart so this is a three tick Renko on the ES and this is my 550 so you can see it's a somewhat similar and this isn't always a case but generally it is somewhat similar look to uh, to each other as far as price action goes so there's my tick there's my Renko where the tick will really come into play at times is as I mentioned with divergence particularly but also I may get like right right there we've got a t2 and we've also got a t2 here and also known as a t25 the old floor trader strategy and at times you'll get those set up on the tick but you won't or it won't be so obvious on your Renko chart so they can work really hand in hand now here on CL we've got a 233 tick which is right here and we can see it works beautifully with a four tick Renko so they work fairly closely together now in this particular case you can see here we've got a nice pivot bounce and this is a great example to show you here you can see we've had a real we had there that would have been a very classy two or three B right there a really nice winner and you can see how the price ran all the way up we didn't have any real pullbacks or no pullbacks there except for Bo's tails there on your tick chart you can see here we had a number of re-entry opportunities so therefore if you had have taken profit so if you were taking 12 ticks you would have been off uh, where are we two four six eight ten twelve you would have been out there hundred and twenty dollars on that move well right here and halfway up you had another really nice re-entry opportunity on your tick chart so traders what I've done is giving you a fairly quick rundown over the last 35 minutes but it's not rocket science I'm first of all I just want to find a time frame that suits me and another consideration which I do want to mention is what if the market is moving really quickly now we've seen and at the time of recording here we had the US having a spat with China over the trade war we got the brexit deal sort of up in the air at the moment we've got the Hong Kong riots happening and here I'm recording this on a Monday we're in my part of the world and I know that our markets are about to plummet because the markets plummeted in the US on Friday which means the markets are going to go crazy which means of course that the time frames that we use or the globe session could be really fast and not tradable unfortunately 
we've got many traders and it's called FOMO fear of missing out if the market is moving too quickly just sit on your hands for the day go and play golf go to the movies okay some days it's the markets are just not tradable certainly you can increase the time frame that you're trading but one of the challenges is this let's just have a look at this chart here for a moment so let's just say here I short this right here this is a 2b now with this 2b I would not be in until my third candle here and my stop would go one tick above now let me actually let me pull this up and show you here because I've got a really good example I think it's really relevant and you'll actually see this chart traders on my folder uh, in in the uh, what's it called the chart time frames folder so if you were trading say a two tick Renko during the Globex session and you enter on the close of a first candle even though it's a two tick Renko by the time you take in account the high of that candle the reversal candle you're going to have a five tick stop if you're waiting for a t1 to plot you're going to have a stop of around seven to eight to seventy to eighty dollars now if you're risking a maximum of two percent and with an eight tick stop being eighty dollars that means you need to allow four thousand dollars per contract that you're trading now when you're trading a four tick Renko during the New York hours and you're trading the rule of one or perhaps even a slingshot you're going to have a nine tick stop which is ninety dollars now certainly you can make it a lower stop or a smaller tighter stop but you've got to leave some wriggle room if you're trading the t1 you're going to have a 12 to 13 tick stop which is a 12 to 13 tick stop so you need to allow that it means you need to have around six six and a half thousand per contract because if you start risking any more than two percent traders you're going to head into the danger zone now when it comes traders to trading with tick charts and let me just show you this and I should point this out maybe as a quick reminder one of the advantages also over a tick chart compared to Renko is your stops can usually be tighter because a 233 tick entry will plot earlier generally speaking than a four tick Renko let me say that again you'll usually have an earlier entry on say a 233 tick uh, CL compared to a four tick Renko so on a 233 tick usually I'd have a maximum stop of seven ticks with a minimum target of eight ticks going to break even plus one at seven so your tick charts will give you a smaller stop what you can do and uh, you can actually trade then using your tick charts for your entries in the direction of the Renko chart so the Renko is smoothing out the price action I just thought I'd mentioned that now going back to this chart so if you're trading say the ES a 144 tick you'd have typically a seven tick stop with a 233 tick maximum stop of eight ticks okay if you're waiting for t1 you may go then for a larger stop but generally speaking your tick charts will get you in earlier so here if you've got um, let's just say a two tick uh, Renko on the ES usually you'd have a five tick stop if you're waiting for the t1 you've got a seven to eight tick stop which is what that is a, um, a $100 stop if we take eight ticks is $100 that's what that is so uh, rule of one you'll get in a lot quicker but once you start waiting for a t1 for a nice confirmation you're going to have a larger stop because the reason a larger stop if you're in later and you're placing your stop up here of course you've got a much larger position now if we take this one here this is a classic rule of one entry and it's also a slingshot so there we would have typically a seven tick stop 
so you're gonna have around a $70 stop in that move but look at your risk reward of course you've got a really nice potential run with that so you, you've got to trade all of these things and think about all of these things with your trading so I'll wind this up here setting the time frame just remember time volume and tick going multiples of three Renko or range you go on a multiple of 1.75 to two times higher with each time frame and just remember you just simply select and it, and it wouldn't matter if it was 50 say if you were trading NQ during the globe session 50 150 and 350 for your highest time frame in the end is that time frame tradable thank you very much traders and I hope you get a ton out of this video